15 minutes away from opening our grain and livestock trade on this Wednesday. Mark Oppel, thanks for joining us. Whether watching RFD TV, a lot of folks tuning in every day on Rural Radio Channel 147 on Sirius XM. We welcome you one and all watching or viewing here our Market Day report, all to help you keep your uh, tabs on what's going on, news, weather, and market information. Helping us do that, we don't do it alone by any means. Rich Nelson joining us here from Allendale as we kick off this Wednesday. Uh, Rich, a little bit of weather update from your area. A little rain passing through overnight. I was watching the weather maps here. Not much, but at least a little shower. That's exactly right. So we got, uh, I guess for us, it's not too bad of an issue. We still have a few, uh, few farmers still trying to get in the fields on, on our end of things here, but mm -hmm. certainly for those guys in the southern portion of the Corn Belt, not what they want to see uh, in that uh, massive replanting effort. Corn exactly. Corn. And then we talked about this with you yesterday, and it doesn't appear right now, and, and that's been the history of the, of the grain complex here, futures traders uh, in May, and not going to get overly anxious about whether we have a crop or not. There's a lot of weather left in uh, June, July, and August. That sure is right. And as far as yield determination, there is an issue with late planting and a moderate yield effect, but the real Super Bowl is still in front of us, summer weather and those issues. So uh, as far as uh, everybody's uh, viewpoint, they feel it's going to get planted at some point. Obviously, the question is in West, uh, is with, uh, mm -hmm. what type of plant it is right now. I would imagine once the calendar rolls into June here next week, then that might make a little bit of difference here as we get deeper into the month of June. But corn for, gosh, I don't know how many weeks now, pretty well range bound. Would you agree? I'd say certainly safe for the most part. Uh, no real movement. This argument between heavy old crop supplies and potentially lighter new crop supplies still keeping prices stable for the short term. We do get the weekly ethanol report out. It's Wednesday. Um, is it how important is it that we stay over a million barrels a day production wise? I think for right now it's it's uh, it's it is important here. But keep in mind these past couple weeks have been actually pretty darn good. In mm -hmm. fact, last week 1.027 billion or million barrels per uh, per day. Right. That was eight percent over last year. So as long as we're five percent over, we're beating USDA's hopes right now on corn for ethanol. Turning to soybeans here, is reading that the producers in Brazil have sold about less than 50 percent of their crop here for late May. That's the lowest percentage here since 2007. It is an issue here. And uh, our, our webinar last night, we were talking with uh, Pedro De Neca. He actually mentioned this issue as well. He said very clearly these producers uh, do have quite a bit of grain to move here, and it will be spread out over our new crop export season as well. Mm -hmm. And then we look at the uh, uh, and talk about the wheat trade here. Uh, many suggesting that wheat without a little pressure in uh, corn and beans here of late uh, might be the wild card here and has the most potential to move higher. It certainly is the, the biggest question for us right now. On the U.S. side, we are in a dropping production. No doubt about that. Uh, our question is with all of our partners across the world, mm -hmm. whether they will be doing the same or not. Certainly a big question for us right now. Mm -hmm. Outside markets here, we'll keep an eye on the crude oil. Over $51 a barrel yesterday, the dollar, the stock market. But uh, talk a little bit about that crude oil market here as we uh, head to late May. You know, for the crude side, this uh, OPEC discussion right now, whether uh, what type of production rates to continue with for the future, this will be a big deal for us on the grain side because we do get a, a good portion of our pricing directly from energy markets now with this biofuel component here. Heating oil higher here as well. Rich Nelson joining us from Allendale. We'll take a break. Rich, we'll keep you working here and get us started in the uh, livestock trade here at midweek. Rich Nelson joining us as we continue after this. Be right back.